as I fundamentally disagree with this, when we're telling the country to socially distance, it shows utter contempt to the electorate to openly flout those rules. Um, but that sentiment um, that it was important for those working at the centre to take a lead uh, and to provide an example to the rest of the country, I imagine is one that you agree with. I agree that we should have been following the rules. Um, what is your reflection, Ms McNamara, on the fact that, as is very well known, um, there were a series of parties that took place in the Cabinet Office and in Downing Street in the weeks and months that followed these emails, uh, including one on the 18th of June uh, that you attended? So this should never have happened, is the first thing that I would say unambiguously. Um, and I've set out in my statement a lot more of my thinking and explaining why I did what I did at the time. Explaining is not the same as excusing. Um, and I think that you know, it is both incredibly depressing and actually helpful that people understand a little bit more now about what it was like to work in that organisation during this period of time. Because there's a lot about the handling of when those... Um, the allegations of parties came up that I profoundly disagree with and firstly and most importantly lying about it. I don't understand at all why it wasn't acknowledged that on a number of occasions I'm sure that Downing Street and the Cabinet Office sometimes didn't follow the regulations. You will see throughout any number of emails between us all this endless conversation about is it okay that so many people are in the office? What are we doing to try to limit the number of people in a meeting room? The thing that I think has been particularly unfair about what has happened is it's allowed for a portrayal of a lot of people who worked really hard and did amazing work to be presented as something that, in my experience, they weren't. Now, I, do, I find it hard to talk about this because I didn't, I wasn't there. You know, I'm, I don't know how old I was at the time, but I definitely wasn't partying in number 10. I was either at work or at home. And uh, I think that acknowledging what had happened, acknowledging that some of it was a symptom of the situation, being honest about the fact that actually I would find it hard to pick a one day when the regulations were followed properly inside that building. And I know that because, as I've said in my statement, there was one meeting where we absolutely adhered to the guidance, to the letter, and that was the Cabinet meeting, and everybody moaned about it, moaned and tried to change it repeatedly. So I know how exceptional it was to really, really, really properly follow the guidance. When the police drew the line at what was acceptable or not acceptable as the, I think it's called a birthday gathering, I'm not sure, in the cabinet room, when they said that was the wrong side of the line, I am certain that there are hundreds of civil servants and potentially ministers who in retrospect think they were the wrong side of that line. And I really hope there's been some mature conversation about that because that sort of thing, if it's not addressed, is corrosive, actually, in a culture. Um, and I, I hope that endless lessons are learned about this period of time, um, but some of them are about cultures and ways of working and supporting people and providing better infrastructure so mistakes aren't made, and when mistakes are made, owning them and saying sorry.